My missing husband has returned home. But I know it's not him. My husband disappeared six months ago. I just went to work one day and never came home. This event shocked all the neighbors, because something like this had never happened in our quiet suburb, surrounded by white lace fences. The police began an investigation, a neighborhood watch went around the neighborhood, but no one found a single clue that could clarify what happened to him. Our families struggled in vain with grief. Not long ago, the last wanted posters with my husband's face disappeared, torn down or buried under new posters. The police contacted me less and less, and gradually the calls faded away. I accepted the new reality. No matter how difficult it was, I accepted that my Rick would never come back. And then he came back. Last week I was watering the petunias behind the house when I heard the garden gate creaking open. Instinctively she turned her head, it was him. Exactly the same as on the day of the disappearance. The wind ruffled the same blonde hair, the same bright blue eyes sparkled, the same lips curved in a smile. In shock, I froze. We mourned him for so long, but still he was here. He stood in the garden as if he had gone for a moment to get milk. I asked him where he had been. He did not know. I couldn't remember anything about the last six months. Everyone was overjoyed, friends, our families. We could hardly believe our eyes. But not me. Look, I know this will sound crazy. Our families will never believe me, and I myself will never go to the police unless I suddenly want to spend the rest of my days in a straight jacket. But I just know that the man sleeping in my bed is not my husband. I do not know what to do. I understand in my mind that I should be happy, but I'm not. I am terrified. In fact, I know little about the supernatural, paranormal, I don't even watch horror films, but this situation gives me goosebumps. Just listen, I'll explain why I'm so sure. And perhaps one of you will believe me and tell me what to do now. The morning after Rick returned, I made him a cup of tea. He accepted it, giving me the most radiant smile. And then he took a piece of sugar from the sugar bowl and threw it into the mug. From the moment he returned, our house was mired in a whirlpool of feverish chaos, I was still in shock and did not attach any importance to it at the time. But the episode itself stuck in my head. This may sound like nonsense, but my husband never drank tea with sugar. He believed that this hopelessly spoiled the taste of the drink, and he was always very upset if I, having forgotten, added sugar to his mug. And yet that man drank tea with sugar. The next call was golf. A few days ago there was a golf tournament, and Rick was visiting his mother at the time. One of his favorites was playing, so I recorded the tournament so he wouldn't miss anything. He was a huge golf fan. One day I even cancelled our anniversary to watch the championship. But when he returned home and I showed him the recording, he, did not react. No, of course he said thank you and all that, and then just asked if I wanted to have dinner. And he didn't touch the TV. And then one night I woke up around two and saw Rick's face just a couple of centimeters above mine. He looked at me with empty eyes. Baby, what are you doing? I asked with a nervous laugh. He didn't answer. For another long thirty seconds he simply looked through me. And then he suddenly smiled and said. Sorry, dear. I still sometimes can't believe it's all real. And then he turned over on his other side and fell asleep. But not me. Yesterday it was about a week since he returned. Neighbors gathered for a party to celebrate the occasion. People from our street and neighboring streets came to reassure Rick how happy they were that he was okay. He was constantly in the thick of the crowd. Either he stood next to me, hugging me, or he wandered around, chatting friendlily with everyone he met and even with the children. Jackson, the little son of Sally, our neighbor, wanted to play hide and seek, and Rick happily went with him. And I'll tell you what. He would never do anything like that. My husband claimed that he did not like children. That's why we didn't and couldn't have children, that's why he never played with the neighbor's kids. Especially with Jackson, Rick literally avoided him. Shortly before his disappearance, I began to suspect that my husband was simply trying to stay away from the boy so that no one would notice their subtle but obvious similarities. The final nail in the coffin was Sally herself. This morning she knocked on our door. 
She stood on the threshold with a large tray of cakes as an excuse to come in, but I understood that she just wanted to get inside to assess the situation with her own eyes. I sent her away and called her an annoying bore. And Rick just laughed, kissed the top of my head and agreed. Can you imagine? It was then that I finally became convinced that this man could not be my husband. Rick would fly into a rage if I insulted Sally. As if I didn't have a reason to hate her, as if she hadn't fucked my husband for years behind my back. But today everything was quiet. He no longer tried to protect her. I know what you're thinking. It is quite possible that he had an accident, hit his head, and the memories were simply erased, perhaps even changing his personality. And this is a very good, logical explanation, I don't argue. This is exactly what the police would have told me if I had decided to tell them my story. But do you know why I am absolutely sure that this man is not my husband? He doesn't have a scar. It's that simple. If it really was Rick, he would have a scar on his forehead from the golf club I hit him with. But it's empty. Not a trace. Honestly, I'm ready to dig the hell out of my petunias tonight just to make sure his body is still there. I have no idea who I share the bed with but it's definitely not my husband. So what should I do?